Good afternoon, good morning, uh, conference attendees. Uh, this is the presentation of Port Submission 109 for this 2021 edition of the Data for Policy Conference. And the purpose of this presentation is to walk you through the OECD good practice principles for data ethics in the public sector. My name is Arturo Rivera, and I am a policy analyst at the OECD working on the government and data. Hi everyone, my name is Omar Batar. I'm a policy advisor at the Treasury Board of Canada Secretariat uh, in the Government of Canada. Hi everyone, my name is Natalia de Magala and I'm the head of data ethics at the Central Digital and Data Office in the UK. Thank you very much, Natalia and Omar. So for the purpose of time, let's start with the presentation. Just to provide you all with a quick overview of this uh, information that we're sharing with you today, we will be discussing and presenting to you some background on the good practice principles and how they connect to broader uh, OECD work on digital government and data. Then we will go straight into the good practice principles, their focus and their scope. And then we will be also uh, presenting to you some challenges and opportunities in relation to the implementation of the good practice principles and also in relation you know, to the next steps or to the future, what we are working uh, together to turn in terms of supporting the implementation and creating further capacity and awareness and so on in relation to data ethics in the public sector across uh, OECD member and non-member countries. So that said, it is uh, impossible uh, to speak about data ethics in the public sector without actually uh, walking you through the OECD digital government policy framework. The policy framework is a policy instrument uh, which has been developed by the OECD and its purpose is to support the digital transformation of the public sector across OECD member and partner countries. Uh, and we have structured this policy framework around six specific dimensions. Uh, for the purpose of time, it is difficult to go in detail across uh, all of them, but I can tell you that, for instance, when we speak about the dimension of digital by design, we speak about the need to design and deliver policies and services which are multi-channel and which leave no one uh, behind. Uh, from the perspective of digital by design, inclusion is fundamental and also uh, quite close to the issue that we are discussing today. Also the two dimensions of being user-driven and proactive, really going first where citizens and businesses are so that we can deliver, the governments can deliver services uh, to them in advance or before the need is expressed but also the importance of being user-driven in terms of really using the needs or identifying the needs of the citizens and the businesses to design and to deliver uh, services and policies that respond to those needs. We also have three other uh, dimensions. The one uh, related to governments of platform, engaging users, engaging citizens, engaging businesses when designing and delivering. Uh, policies and, and services. Also, for instance, in, ter in terms of developing tools which could be reused across the, uh, the public sector to ensure further coherence, and also the issue related to openness by default. And this touches in growth uh, in different aspects of policy as in open data, as in open decisions, as in open algorithms, or for instance, also open source, uh, open content, and so on. Uh, the last of them, which is the most critical one of the, uh, and the one that is the most related to data ethics in the public sector, the one uh, related to data-driven uh, public sector, which means really easily uh, the strategic use of data, okay, for policy making, uh, for service design and delivery. But nonetheless, for that to happen, it is important to say that there are some foundations and some strategic actions and considerations which should be put in place or taken um, um, as an input when designing policies and services which are going to be using data as a strategic input. The first one, which is really important, is data governance. We all know that data governance is quite high right now in the political and the policy agenda, not only of OECD member countries, but uh, across uh, the globe. And for this purpose, the way that we um, at the OECD push for data governance is in a holistic and coherent way. 
we speak, when we discuss about data, uh, data governance in the public sector, we mean about the importance of having leadership and vision. We speak about data stewardship in the public sector. We also speak about rules and frameworks, but also, for instance, soft instruments such as data ethical frameworks. But also, we go we will go more in detail about data governance. It's also about shared data infrastructures, data architectures, standards, and so on. Uh, we don't uh, address data governance in the public sector at the OECD only from the perspective of data protection and privacy, but broadly. And this is critical to make sure that every policy and service using data, um, it doesn't matter if it's data from citizens or if it's data which is produced as a result of the administrative activities of the government, really uh, respects you know, or really adheres to broader efforts, efforts uh, in the public sector related to national data strategies and, and, and so on. Also the strategic application of the data to in order to deliver public value for anticipation and planning for the delivery of policy, policies and services, as I mentioned earlier, and also really important to evaluate and to monitor the results of those policies. This also connects quite uh, importantly you know, to the uh, data value cycle and to the need to connect uh, data inputs and outputs so that you can enrich how you design and make a policy. And also just to close this slide, the uh, trust, which is fundamental, not only trust in the data, but also trust in the broader sense. When we speak about the security of the data, the transparency of, in relation of how the data is being used by and within the public sector, uh, trust in relation to privacy and consent. And of course, as you can see your screen, trust in relation to the ethical governance and the ethical management of data within the public sector. As I mentioned before, data governance is foundational to uh, the strategic use of data in the public sector. I already walked you through uh, the content, the scope of what we mean by data governance, but again, we wanted to stress the importance of building the foundations right from the very beginning. There is no initiative or policy in the public sector that uh, doesn't need a strong data governance. And for this, there is a lot of effort that needs to be put in place uh, beforehand. I would now like to give you a little bit more detail on uh, what is data ethics. So the definition that we're using has been developed by Floridian Tadeo and um, it describes data ethics as an emerging branch of applied ethics that studies and evaluates moral problems and describes the value judgments related to data. And this can include data generation, data recording, data curation, data processing, dissemination, sharing and use as well as algorithms, including artificial intelligence, artificial agents, machine learning, and robots, and um, any other corresponding practices, such as responsible innovation, programming, hacking, and professional codes. And uh, this is all in order to formulate and support morally good solutions, for example, right conducts or right values. And uh, in terms of data ethics in the public sector, it is an emerging area in, um, in public sector across the OECD member countries. And um, essentially data ethics frameworks exist to complement data privacy and data protection laws and any other related policies, um, not to replace them. Data ethics is, is the gray area uh, between what's uh, legal and um, what's moral. And um, any frameworks developed in this area are non-binding and um, are usually designed to inform the existing digital policies and any other policies related to data management, artificial intelligence, open government, or conflict of interest. And um, the effectiveness of data ethics frameworks can't be achieved in isolation. Putting in place sound data governance arrangements in the public sector, for example, institutional roles and responsibilities, various coordinating bodies or advisory bodies, accountability mechanisms as well, is a really crucial precondition for success of any data ethics tools. And um, data governance structures are essential, in particular when it comes to implementing data ethics values in practice. And um, data ethics is concerned with all types of data used in the public sector, 
but it also concerns behaviors of individuals and um, teams that handle data. And um, we need to remember that data used by governments should not lead to, to any harm or any discrimination. It should promote inclusion, respect diversity, and ensure that individuals and collectives are treated uh, equally and benefit from the outcomes that a data-driven public sector aims to deliver. And um, in terms of the context of this particular uh, document, the um, OECD's uh, thematic group on data-driven public sector developed um, the good practice principles of between the 2019 and, um, and 2020. And uh, that was a collaborative effort among the OECD member countries and um, various partner countries as well. This document was developed under the leadership of the Netherlands and um, it was revised by external partners from the civil society and other international organizations. And it was finally published in May um, this year. And since the publication of the good practice principles, the UK and Canada have been leading, uh, co-leading the thematic group. And the focus of our work has been mainly on the implementation of the good practice principles. Uh, so let's talk about the goals of the document. So the main goal of the good practice principles is to foster ethical decision-making um, when it comes to the design and implementation of any initiative in government that, that involves the generation, uh, use, management, or sharing of data. Um, they serve as non-binding guidance to existing uh, OECD uh, reports and recommendations. So for example, they, they're meant to reinforce the provisions of the OECD recommendation of the Council on Digital Government Strategies. Um, they're meant to supplement the OECD report, which was covered earlier in the presentation on the path to becoming a data-driven public sector, um, and also support the implementation of the OECD recommendation of the Council on AI and the draft OECD recommendation on enhanced access to and sharing of data. Uh, so let's get into the good practice principles. Um, I'm going to give a broad kind of overview and briefly discuss each one of them, um, uh, recognizing that, that of course, the, each of them is associated with a wide range of behaviors and, and considerations. Um, managing data with integrity is really about considering uh, how employees should not abuse their positions in the public sector and, uh, and, and really avoid uh, conflicts of interest or using data uh, that, that is entrusted to them for any personal gain. Um, the second principle is about awareness and be, being uh, observant of relevant government-wide arrangements uh, associated with the data access sharing and use. Uh, so this is really about leveraging training opportunities um, uh, engaging with the relevant authorities and stakeholders to make sure that, that uh, they are aware of legal policy and, and other uh, relevant um, uh, rules uh, pertaining to data or impacting data. Uh, the third is about incorporating uh, the considerations associated with this framework uh, into the policy making and other decision making processes in government. Uh, so this covers procurement, this can cover uh, funding decisions, this can cover uh, the, the way services are designed, uh, and also the way programs are, are managed and run. Um, the fourth uh, concerns data that is mainly used in the context of artificial intelligence, so AI data, as, as some might call it. And uh, really, the focus here is on monitoring and retaining control over uh, data inputs to, to these systems. Um, in order to make sure that they meet certain quality standards and in order to make sure that the outputs of those automated systems are, uh, uh, are, are not biased and are as fair as possible. Um, part of this principle also addresses the need for a risk-based approach uh, to the automation of decisions. And so um, uh, being able to put in place uh, impact assessments or risk assessments uh, in order to understand, for example, uh, the risk posed by the, the, uh, the data that was used to train the system. Um, was it representative? Was it comprehensive? Um, uh, it, can we ensure that the system deployed uh, 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 can be de uh, deployed at, on a, at, at a wide population level scale, for example? Uh, the fifth principle uh, is really about defining um, very clearly the purpose of data use, uh, especially when we're talking about personal data where there are existing uh, uh, legislative instruments um, uh, in, in usually in, in, in public sectors. 
and and this is really about uh, defining and and articulating uh, why uh, and and how data collected uh, is going to be used, uh, including uh, primary and secondary uses. And so distinguishing between uh, initial uh, uh, or primary uses, those are consistent with what consent was given for, for example, and any secondary or additional uses uh, for which additional consent might be warranted. Uh, and the sixth one is a relevant point, and it's really about defining boundaries for data access sharing and use. And uh, so this is really about uh, for example, putting in place rules for data management, um, instituting self-assessments uh, to determine uh, the, the, the boundaries that, that should be established for, uh, for a program or for a policy or for any other um, arrangement involving the access sharing or use of data. Uh, the seventh is about um, clarity, inclusiveness, and, and openness. Uh, it's really intuitive uh, for the most part. So uh, this, the focus here is on uh, uh, bringing in multidisciplinary and diverse teams to work on uh, to work on data or to work on issues touching data, um, and being able to uh, hold consultations and engagements with uh, with public and other stakeholders, uh, especially those who are impacted by by those digital or, or data driven um, initiatives. Um, number eight is about publishing open data and source code. Again, in many jurisdictions in the OECD and, and elsewhere, we see open government programs in place where uh, there is an open data, um, uh, a continuous uh, publication of open data. Um, here, we're also talking about source code where uh, it's encouraged that governments uh, publish uh, source code and, and even resort to open source where possible so that um, other stakeholders in, in industry and in other sectors of society can, can collaborate on the source code, is it, are able to scrutinize it, are able to uh, to understand it and even refine it potentially. Um, broadening individuals and collectives control. This is about what many people call data portability. And uh, the focus here is really uh, instituting data governance arrangements, for example, such as data trusts, uh, as we're seeing in some jurisdictions, that give citizens more control over their personal data. And uh, what this means is more, more, uh, more of a say in where their data resides and uh, what data they, uh, uh, they provide to an institution can be accessible uh, and how that data should be used or not be used, for example. Um, and finally, accountability and proactiveness uh, in managing risks. So this is really about uh, uh, putting in place, for example, whistleblower protections, um, uh, ensuring that there are audits that can, that can be undertaken to review data practices uh, uh, in a program, in a policy, in a service context, uh, and make sure that, that, that any sort of uh, uh, errors or any issues are identified and, and corrected. So we've observed challenges and opportunities um, when it comes to the implementation of this framework uh, in our discussions with various OECD member countries uh, who are also the delegates in the thematic group. Um, we've grouped them into three sort of broad buckets, uh, uh, transparency, accountability, and decision-making, data governance, and data protection. And I'll briefly speak to each of them. Um, so for example, one of the main challenges we've observed is that while this is an emerging area of concern, there's still a lack of uh, concrete specific data ethics guidelines and frameworks in place. Um, there's also a need for dedicated roles and responsibilities uh, covering many of these issues that we've discussed today. Um, however, as I've just mentioned, um, there are well-established open government programs that are really strengthening transparency and account accountability uh, within public sectors. And uh, we see this framework, again, as supplementing or complementing such initiatives uh, that are already in place. Uh, when it comes to data governance, uh, a, range of a range of issues have been observed as well. Um, many jurisdictions are developing national or governmental AI strategies. Uh, which is a, a positive development. However, uh, we see that these do not necessarily address uh, questions of data. Uh, so we saw that one of our principles touches on the data that is used as inputs for AI systems. And that is the kind of thing that AI strategies uh, or, or other instruments should be able to address. Um, in many jurisdictions, we find that there's an enabling legislative and policy environment that is able to drive responsible data sharing, for example, between government institutions and even across sectors. Um, another opportunity is the 
uh, data training uh, initiatives and competency frameworks that are uh, being observed in many jurisdictions. And these are really setting the stage for a more data literate workforce that is able to actually uh, not only um, uh, uh, identify uh, issues, but also to understand the value of, of data ethics within their own respective work contexts. Um, in data protection, we see widely established data protection legal frameworks. Uh, in the EU, we know this, this takes the form of the GDPR. Uh, in other jurisdictions, we are also seeing uh, emerging uh, data protection legislation. Uh, uh, and this is, of course, a very solid foundation to build upon. Um, at the same time, uh, there are barriers to a tell us once or a once only approach to service delivery. Uh, so what this means is that uh, public sectors continue to find it challenging to actually uh, share personal data and to, to be able to avoid uh, collecting that data multiple times from clients or from citizens. Uh, and finally, um, there are existing mechanisms we've observed in some jurisdictions that provide control to citizens over their personal data. So um, this takes the form of um, online uh, portals or platforms where uh, citizens can again know what data they provided to an institution uh, and be able to control uh, uh, how that, that data is accessed and for how long and uh, and also potentially be able to port that data elsewhere and uh, to to uh, be able to provide it to other institutions. So what's next in terms of uh, looking ahead? Um, from the OECD perspective, it is still important to keep uh, raising awareness and building capacities across uh, OECD member and partner countries so that uh, data ethics uh, can be put into action. There is, as uh, my colleagues were sharing, there are still too many challenges in place. Uh, this specific area is still under development, but beyond that is still misunderstood. This is why it is important to keep raising this awareness in building capacities specific, which are specific to data ethics. Um, in collaboration with uh, the UK and with Canada, we have organized uh, already a webinar on data ethics in which we did not only presented uh, the data ethics uh, framework, which we are sharing with you today, but we also brought practitioners from the United States from other international organizations such as the ODI uh, with the focus of really with the objective of really um, sharing uh, knowledge and also listening to other people out there which might be also working on trying to advance the data ethics agenda in the public sector. Um, we also have example of course of the Netherlands which used, which first as uh, my colleagues mentioned, uh, led um, the work of the thematic group on um, data-driven public sector during the last two years, but most importantly, they used the data ethics, uh, the good practice principles for data ethics in the public sector as an input, you know, to the activities and the efforts that they are uh, taking at the national level in connection to the national data strategy of the Dutch government. And also we keep engaging with governments, okay? We keep engaging with governments, within the OECD membership, but also beyond the OECD membership. We are working in different regions in Latin America, we're working in Southeast Asia, we're working in their MENA region precisely to bring uh, the importance of this uh, policy issue closer to practitioners, but even more importantly, closer to decision makers within the public sector. Uh, so this year we've prioritized uh, the development of an implementation strategy um, within the thematic group on data-driven public sector. Um, the group is currently being um, uh, co-chaired by uh, Canada and the UK, and uh, of course with the support of our OECD colleagues. Um, this is really our priority for this year uh, in order to make sure, again, that those principles can be translated into concrete actions and uh, adapted or adopted uh, across the OECD. Finally, we are also working to identify opportunities for adapting the good practice principles in various public sector contexts. And um, this includes, for example, collaboration with the digital nations on developing the data ethics agenda further. Thank you very much, everyone, for listening to our presentation. We are looking forward to answering your questions in the Q&A section. Thank you very much.